But I always love Christmas time. It's a great time uh, to remember what Jesus did, that he came to the earth. And we know he came to die for us, but the fact that he came in the first place, that he was willing to come and to actually reveal himself to us. So I hope everyone had a great Christmas. We want to see some of those comments in, uh, in, on the Facebook page about the um, presents that you got and things like that. We've got one so far, so a few more. Um, and if you didn't get a present, then we realize we need to organize something for you. So if you don't put your name in there, then you might end up getting another present. No, just joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's, uh, we had a lovely time. Uh, with, uh, it was actually just our immediate family this time. That's unusual for us. Normally we have extended family or other people coming in. But, uh, but I know some people did um, as well, so that's great. So we're thinking about today living in perfect peace which is really a reminder of what God's been saying to us all year, if you think about it, that he was talking to us about that message of shalom and understanding that. Um, but I think Christmas is a great time to remember that as well. And so just remembering uh, this scripture that we've, we think about at Christmas time, and we remember a few times, for unto us a child is born, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. That's the best present of all, isn't it? And the government will be on his shoulders. That should give us peace immediately because he's taking care of things for us. It's when we take, try and take back control. That was a saying at one time. <laughs> when we try and take back control that we can get stressed, isn't it? But when we give the control to God, then actually we know that he's working everything for the good of those who love him, of those who are called according to his purpose. So the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Praise God that he has the best wisdom. Mighty God. He has the strength to carry out the wisdom. Everlasting Father. He gives us a relationship with him that is intimate and real and will never end. It's called eternal life. And the Prince of peace. So we're thinking about walking in perfect peace today. Where's the perfect peace? It comes from the Prince of Peace. And so every time we know when we're moving away from the Prince of Peace, don't we? Because we start to get into the anxiety. We start to get into the stress. So let's remind ourselves before we get into 2022 that he's the Prince of Peace. That no matter how big the struggle looks, there's an incredible God who loves us. There's an incredible God who wants to be our everlasting father. There's an incredible God um, who has taken the government on himself. And of the greatness of his government, or the increase of his government, some versions say, and peace, there will be no end. Let's say that together. There will be no end. No end to the increase of his government and peace. So we thank God for that. What is that peace? It's the word shalom. We'll think about that again today as we just, for the last time in 2021. Peace, harmony, wholeness completeness, uh, prosperity, well, welfare, and tranquility, or our modern equivalent of well-being and wholeness, wholeness and well-being. That's what Jesus is offering to the world. He's the Prince of Shalom. He's the Prince of Wholeness. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? Peace I leave with you, Jesus said, not as the world gives peace, but that I give you peace. It's a special kind of peace. Have you ever had those times when everything seems to be wrong, but suddenly you're in this place of peace, and it's because he's the Prince of Peace. It goes beyond the circumstances, and it gives us this incredible sense of order, divine order in our lives, and Christ is our peace. And let's never forget that as we leave 2021 and we move into 2022, let's never forget that Christ is is our peace. Just say, Christ is my peace. Christ is my peace. No, we're never going to find it anywhere else. We're not going to find it in, the, in the, the best trainers in the world. We're not going to find it in the best Christmas present in the world or the best gold chain in the world. We're not even going to find it in the best relationship in the world. You know, he is the Prince of Peace. It's got to be that divine uh, relationship. So whatever else we're looking to, let's never forget he is our peace. Um, because he's the one who's broken down all the walls and put us back with God and with each other as well. So let's never forget that. He is our peace. Let's say that again. He is our peace. Amen. We really got to get that established, haven't we? 
We've really got to get that established. So when we go into 22, we go in with that peace in our hearts, saying no matter what happened in 2021, one thing I did get was the peace of God in my heart. Amen? So, God made him who had no sin. Who's that? Jesus. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. That pretty much should give us an incredible amount of peace. To be sin for us. Everything I've ever done wrong, all the perversion, all the, 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 the greed, all the sinfulness, he took on himself. All that separation from God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Isn't that incredible? In Christ, we become righteous. We become in a right relationship with him. We have his life inside of us. And that goes right from our spirit, then into our soul, then into our body. And so reminding us again, and that we have a heart that is like a garden we need to tend. And that's what will keep us in peace. And so 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. Something's come alive inside of us. You can say it today, I am a new creation. I am a new creation. If you're in Christ, you are a new creation. But, 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 no, you are a new creation. The Bible says the old things have passed away. All things have become new. And we know that by all things, it's talking about all things in our spirit. Amen? we still got to tend the garden of our soul. Then we've got the soul. And if we tend that garden and pull out the weeds, um, did a little bit of weeding this year. Praise God. <laughs> um, Dorcas probably did more than me. <laughs> and, uh, but I did cut the grass. But, but isn't a garden like that? Well, our soul is like that. The garden of our soul is that. Well, you have to tend it every day, actually. You have to pull out little things that are trying to get in there. Distractions or pains or resentments. We have to pull them out every day and keep allowing the reign of God's spirit and the sunshine of his presence to give us the nutrition that we need to um, produce good fruit. Amen? So it's a daily process. And then our soul begins to dwell in the Prince of Peace. Why? Why? Because Isaiah 26.3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on, he, on thee. Who keeps, who's kept in perfect peace? The one whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. I just wanted to quote the, the these today and the thou's. <laughs> because he trusteth in thee. Or as the New King James says, you will keep him in perfect peace. I love that, perfect peace. Remember we learned what perfect peace is. We translate it perfect peace, but it's actually shalom, shalom. You'll keep him in shalom, shalom, in peace, peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. Our mind will stay on Jesus if we trust in Jesus. Yeah? If we trust in Jesus. And I think there's times when we don't trust in Jesus. Not this one, Jesus. You can't do this one. And that's, we know when, because that's when the anxiety starts. Yeah? So we've got to stay, keep our mind on him. Why? What's our motivation? Because we do trust in him. So you have to say, Am I going to trust Jesus in this situation? Now, I know you've trusted him for eternal life, and that's dwelling in your spirit, but we're talking about the soul here. Do you see what I'm saying? We're talking about the garden of the soul. Am I allowing the good fruit, the seed of which is in the soil, to actually sprout and take care of things rather than let weeds grow? Another way that it's said in the NLT translated you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you there we go again all whose thoughts are fixed on you so there's something about when we trust in him that we'll decide to sit, fix our thoughts on him and so there's a proactive thing we have to do daily. so now we understand why we need to have a daily devotion don't we because you're proactively deciding 
to fix your thoughts on him. That's why we sing to the Lord, because we proactively choose to remind ourselves of the goodness of God. NIV, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. So our minds can be steadfast because they trust in you. So also there's a result. We have steadfast minds because we trust in Jesus. So Jesus truly is our uh, Prince of Peace, yeah? And so when we get our heart, soul, and mind in order, our choices, our thinking in order, now our bodies can come into order. And there's something about attending to God's word. My son, attend to my words. Or as it says in the NIV, pay attention to what I say. Yeah? Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my words. So something about listening to the word as well, speaking it out loud that does something, or listening on audio. Do not let them out of your sight. And we know the Jews, they would read them over and over, wouldn't they? Read them out. They'd learn the whole Torah off by heart and just speak it over and over and over and let it just penetrate their soul, their heart. So they, they were a living, walking Torah, you know? We could, and we want to be living, walking Bibles. We want to be flesh becoming the word. Jesus was the word made flesh. But we want to become flesh be, being made the word as we speak it out. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Why? Because, for, they are life. That's cheye life. That means fullness of life. A bit like zoe life. Fullness of life. Spirit, soul, and body. They are life to those who find them. And health to one's whole body. That medicine. The word can be medicine to you, you know, as we speak the word out. Um, and there's times when we have to train our brains to resist fear, to resist depression, um, and all the results that came from the fall. You know, and think about the way you, you think and the questions you ask. Rather than why can't I, say why does this always, or why does this all ha always happen to me? Say, how can I? You know, what are the possibilities in God? What is God saying through this? You see, change the questions that you ask. And God begins to release those positive chemicals into our body that bring healing. And then, not only can we feel better and stronger and healthier in our bodies, almost a, a step in our, you know, in our, a skip in our step, but actually, that then can translate to actually our relationships. You know, when you're feeling better, you actually, the way you relate to others, creates a better reality. And we've joked about that before, that one person can go into a situation, say, oh, that's a really horrible person there. Every time, da, da, da. And then when I went over there, it was terrible. And then someone else can go in and say, hey, how are you doing today? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had a great chat. It was a really amazing time. That's an amazing person. We can almost create the reality by the way we are on the inside. And so we can shine out the light. Yes, darkness is in the earth, but arise, shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. But there's darkness. Yes, darkness covers the earth and covers the people, deep darkness the people. But upon you has God's light shone. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. So you rise. You know, as Curtis always says, a great arising to you. <laughs> you know, arise, shine, your light has come. And so our relationships can start to be better. You know, um, whether that's in church or wherever that is or around about us. Ephesians 2.14 says, Jesus has broken down that dividing wall of division. And so he is our peace, who has broken down the dividing wall and made us all one in the cross. Isn't that incredible? And so sometimes we come into a situation where it might be the honeymoon stage. Hey, I really love this person. We're really getting on. Or we're really building great in our life group or wherever it might be. And then we say, let's all be real. And we are real. We take our masks off. We go, ugh, I don't like that. And there's the conflict stage. Don't run away when there's the conflict stage. That's when you're meant to press in, to keep loving, keep forgiving, 
I mean, maybe you feel someone ate too, too many of your prawns or something. But you've got to still forgive and keep loving. <laughs> so that's an, a little in-joke there for, for Curtis and Olivia. <laughs> but you still forgive. And when you forgive, you break through to the next level of relationship. Amen? And that's when you become closer. And so it's actually getting through our thoughts and all. That's what makes us a kingdom family. Kingdom family. Amen? And then that creates community, as we said, kingdom family. And once we're united, we say, let's just stay like this. We just like our group just like this. Somebody else coming in will spoil it. Uh-uh. That's the point where we've got to open up like the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves us, and have a wound, inconvenience that lets other people in. And that's evangelism. That's outreach. Loving people enough to bring them into our kingdom community and allow them to grow. And they may start from A again, and we may have to go through the conflict stage again, and we may have to go through But it brings community again because God's a God of love. He's a God of growth. He's a God of sacrifice, and he's willing to let people come in and be a part. Amen? And then that causes growth, and that's how it happens, and we go around in circles again. Amen? <laughs> and, uh, but that's real community. So peace... Remember we said that before, it's not just inner peace, it's also relational peace. It affects our relationships. And so people come. And you know, the lovely thing is, we've met quite a few people recently who are previous um, LNCers, and we've just had a few meals with them and things like that. And almost every single one of them says, yeah, but there was something special about LNC, there was something special about the relationships. We still feel that to this day. And that's a blessing, isn't it, that, that we are a church that builds strong relationships that believes in kingdom family. Um, because I believe that is a part, it's not just about intellectually growing in God. It's about relational growth as well and how we treat each other is very, very important, you know. So let's keep doing that as we enter 2022. Let's have relational peace as well as inner peace. And then there is that kind of uh, outer peace or structural peace into the community that we actually do things that bring peace in our communities. We do things into our communities where they say we can see that they're Jesus' disciples by their love for one another. And so then they see us re interacting together. They say, wow, what is it about that, those people? What is it about Neil and Bev in their neighborhood, the people they have into their house, the way they are with people in the neighborhood, the way they help them? There's something about them that tells us there's something more. They are literally seeing an outer shalom. And we can bring that into whether it's a housing, you know, a, a residence association, whether it's our local neighborhood, whether it's the school that you work in or that your kids go to, um, uh, whether it's the local shops or the place where you work. We can bring that outer shalom, a structural change. You might be in a place of where you can bring change. You might be in a place of influence or a, a, a manager or a boss or, or even just amongst your work colleagues. You can bring a structural change sometimes. Maybe you're part of a union that can bring a structural change that brings something good into a situation where you say, this is not good working practices. Let's change this. And you can bring that shalom. That's shalom as well. Maybe you can bring to prosperity where there's been deprivation in a community, that's shalom. So can you see how shalom, this peace, this perfect peace, this shalom shalom starts, yes, on the inside, and we've got to cultivate our hearts, that's where it starts, but then it goes into our thinking, into how we feel in our bodies, out into our relationships, and then into the community. And that's how God wants us to be. So let's remember that. This is a reminder of that as we leave 2021 and go into 2022 to walk in that perfect peace, to create that ecosystem of peace. Amen? Um, and that comes through not being negative or selfish or just working according to the flesh. We'll go into that a bit more in a minute. But we're thinking outwardly to give to others brings a peace. Sometimes we're trying to grab onto things to have peace, but actually it's when you give, you receive. It's quite interesting. And sometimes you can, have you ever done that? You've gone out and you've helped others and you feel better. It's crazy, you feel better, but you've helped us. Because we were made as vessels for good, fresh life to flow in and flow out of again. Amen? Give me an amen. 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 Give me an amen, Facebook friends. <laughs> I can't hear you loud enough. Say it again. <laughs> Great. Okay. So as we close, I want to think of some habits um, 
These are these habits, and I'm reminding you of these. Practice these habits to live in peace. So if you've got a pen, write these down or go over them again later. Practice these habits to walk in peace. So the first one is set your mind. First one to practice these habits to live in peace is set your mind on the word and prayer. Set your mind on God through the word and prayer. Or set your affection on God. I remember Mr. Young, John Young used to always, I remember him preaching on this, this scripture. Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on the things above. Or he used to use the King James, set your affection on things above. You can see that's emotional, isn't it? Be, have your affection set on God. Be, be in love with Jesus. Amen? Set your affection on what his desires are. So that can be a bit emotional. You know, make choices towards God. Have you ever been in a relationship and sometimes you're getting annoyed in that relationship and things are not going so well? But you have to make a choice to love. And when you make the choice to love, and it might be in a practical way, you buy something for them or you do something for them. Or it might be in a, in a, a touch where you hold their hand or give them a hug rather than criticize them. Or it may be your words that you use. You say something positive or affirming to them. Even when you don't feel like it, you choose to love. Yeah? You choose to love. And when you choose to love, suddenly the emotion of love follows. We think we have to feel it to do it. Uh, uh, uh. We have to truth it to feel it. <laughs> and that's why this whole present day thing of your truth, my truth, everybody's truth, it's just how you feel, do what you feel, it doesn't work. Imagine if you just did what you feel. This world will be chaos. You know, some people might feel like killing people. Some people might feel like stealing. It'll be chaos. No, we do the truth in love, and then we feel it. So you choose, you act, then you feel. So we make the right choices. Meditate on the word. Make the choice to meditate on the word every day. Why don't you finish 2021 strong? Meditate on the word every day and just listen to what God's saying in your heart. And then pray. And when I say pray, that can mean listen. Meditate on the word, then just listen. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> just listen. That is prayer. And let him speak into your heart and write some things down. Okay. You know, every day I, I pray, I, I won't say every day, m most days I pray Psalm 139. It's, Lord, search me and try me. Know my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And God speaks to me. You're good today, Alex. Or don't focus on that. Focus on this today, Alex. Or be good to your wife, Alex. Or whatever he might say to me. You know, care for so. so God will speak into your heart. So listen to God. Set your hearts on the things above. That will change the garden of your soul. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Isn't that amazing? When we, we can hear heaven. We can hear heaven. What heaven is saying. Set your minds. So not only your emotions, but your minds on the things above. Not on earthly things. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So that's the first thing to bring that perfect peace. That's something practical you can just choose right now. I'm going to do that every morning. I'm going to meditate on the word and I'm going to listen to God. Second habit, put to death the flesh. Put to death the flesh. What does that mean? Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. It's interesting, isn't it, that sometimes we say, well, I don't bow down to statues. I'm not an idolater. You know, I don't bow down to gods made of wood or whatever it might be or stone. But sometimes we're committing idolatry just by our greed. Maybe we're taking something from somebody else. Um, we're putting something else as our God to satisfy us. That's idolatry. Because I'm now saying Jesus isn't good enough. I need to do something else. Jesus and something else. So we're actually... Becoming pluralistic. Pluralists, aren't we? Polytheists. <laughs> because we're putting something before Jesus. 
And so we put him first. Now he gives us then all good things to enjoy in the right place and at the right time and in the right way. Amen? So put to death anything that's idolatry, yeah? Thirdly, choose perfect peace. We have to choose perfect peace. I love this scripture. Let Jesus rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Do you know there's a choice every time when you come into a situation? Have you noticed that? You can let the peace of God rule in your heart. Or you can let the anxiety and the worry and the fear rule in your heart. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Say, I've been called to peace. I've been called to peace. And be thankful. Being thankful is helpful for peace as well. You know, we have the choice. Oh, praise the Lord. (laughs) Oh, yes, Jesus. (laughs) Oh, you know, and we have a choice there, don't we? We can say, oh, no, or oh, thank you, Jesus. You're going to do something through this. I've had to do that sometimes when I'm trying to get to the church by a certain time and then the, the, the train um, cross gates go down. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, so we have to learn to praise God in every circumstance, isn't it? And to thank him through those things. And there's an incredible peace that comes through that. So choose perfect peace. Even in conflict, choose reconciliation. Choose, don't choose win-lose, I'm right, you're wrong. Or lose-win, okay, I'm totally wrong and everything you say is right. No. Or lose-lose, you're a loser, I'm a loser. But choose win-win. You know, you can win in life, I can win in life. And even deeper than that, choose truth in love. I'm only sharing this because I want us to walk in good relationship. I want genuine relationship. Sometimes we can disagree well, yeah? Um, Ask yourself, what is the aim of our confrontation? It's to build relationship rather than destroy it. And so we've got to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. And I think this has been a great quote that I've quoted a couple of times this year by Mighty, Mighty Pursuit. It was on their platform. It says, depression and despair is projecting a negative outcome of your future. The reason you feel depressed is because you can't imagine a better better you. You can't imagine a better future. <clears throat> a better life. So you are actually rooting your soul in the most negative future possible. The reason we experience anxiety is because we have an unidentifiable number of things that are out of control and we assume a negative outcome. But there's always hope. God knows how to get you out of that maze. Amen? And that's why we've got to put our trust in the Prince of Peace. So, choose peace. And then, worship together with spiritual gifts. There's something beautiful about worship. Because as we begin to... Um, enter, enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We then enter his courts, the heavenly place, with praise. So there's something about, as we begin to be grateful in life and thankful in those little situations, it takes us deeper into God's presence. And then when we take time to pause and praise, like we did this morning, or with a, in your life group, or in your family, or with some friends, we enter his courts his holy place, his deep place, we've prayed. And there's something special about worship. As you see the lamb, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's something special as you get caught up in his presence that brings an incredible peace into your mind and into your heart. And, you know, even when we've done that as a family, something special happens there. Something special happens. And as we do that as a life group, and then it builds you up It makes you more positive. It brings a culture of honor amongst us and encouragement amongst us. We become a healing community. As we allow the spiritual gifts to flow, maybe we're just worshiping in the spirit. We're singing with songs, spiritual songs. It says here, let the message of Christ, that's the logos actually, the word of God. The logos of Christ, the word of Christ, dwell among you richly. 
as you teach and admonish one another. We can warn and encourage one another and teach one another with all wisdom. How? Through psalms. Through hymns. We learn through hymns and songs, don't we? So we sing them. It teaches our brain. It teaches our heart. And songs from the Spirit. Sometimes, thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. You're an awesome God. We just see your heavenly presence today. We even sense your presence as we worship you here right now. We're coming into your presence and we're seeing your strong angels around us. We're seeing that there's more for us than against us right now. We thank you, Jesus, that your presence is in this place right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to raise you up into a higher place, Michael, the Lord says, this new year as you go from 2021 into 2022. I'm going to raise you into those heavenly places where you know his presence surrounding you and ministering to you and Evelyn and the family. I'm going to, you're going to know a sense of his healing anointing upon you, a sense that will come not just in your heart, but even in your very body. A, a new skip in, in your walk God says for this new year, thank you, Jesus. The Lord says he's seen your work, Neil, and the, the trials you've gone through and the things you've faced. And he, he says you're a man, an upstanding man, an upright man, because you walk in the ways of the Lord. And God says you walk strong on the earth, and God is pleased with you. He's proud of you, my son. God says to you today, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Can you see that as we begin to walk, worship him we come into a heavenly place and he begins to release things to us we begin to see things from a different angle we begin to get in touch with how God sees us and what God says about us and so isn't it be beautiful just to spend some time with your life group or with some friends and just sing to the Lord and just worship him from your spirit and just see where he flows see what comes to you I just pray God's healing power over you Olivia for your legs for your body in Jesus name Amen. Amen. God loves you, Olivia. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Someone who's feeling lonely right now on, on, uh, uh, on Facebook right now as you're listening, God just says he's coming to feel the loneliness in your heart right now because that's how much he loves you. And he weeps over you. When you weep, he weeps. But those are his tears, his tears of love. And as you weep, they're prayers. And God says he's touching your heart. Because he loves you so much. He lo you feel alone sometimes, but he loves you so much. He loves you so much. God so loved you that he gave his son. You know, that you can dwell in his joy and his peace and his love and his eternal life. So as we worship him, as we thank him, we come into a different reality. Songs from the Spirit. Singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So God's given us these incredible spiritual gifts, this incredible ability to come into the presence of God. We haven't just been given the Torah on stone tablets where we've got to just try and do our best. No, we've come into a relationship with him, with the Prince of Peace. Let's actually enjoy that as a community. You know, <clears throat> there's a process of response to trauma, which a lot of people have been through uh, this year, which we'll, we'll look at in just a moment as we think of the final one. So as we worship him, we're a healing community. Let's, please, let's be that to each other this year. Imagine as we keep speaking God's prophetic word over each other and God's, uh, God's written word over each other. It's going to encourage us, isn't it? It's going to take us to a higher place. We're going to walk in a, a, a better place of peace and healing. And finally, practice this habit. Minister to the community. And so in Colossians uh, 3.17... It speaks about this, ministering to the community. And whatever you do, whether shopping, whether walking down the road, sorry, whether in word or deed, amen, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. But I'm just shopping right now. I'm, I'm shopping in Tesco's in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm shopping in Asda in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm shopping in Waitrose in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Wherever I'm shopping today. Um, I'm shopping in the name of Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. So whatever we're doing, we can minister to our neighbors. It will produce shalom and peace, that structural peace we talked about. In our work, in our social media, um, in the shalom clinic that we did this year. And I know that Michael's group's looking to, to extend that into next year. In our life's groups, in our mentoring. In where, whatever situation we're in, we can be ministering peace 
out there to the wider community as well. Look, the community has had a lot. There's been a process for all of us going on, hasn't there, of a response to the, 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 the COVID crisis that's been going on, looking for safety. Then we've come to times of recovery where we can now reflect, wow, that was difficult, but we begin to kind of heal and process the trauma that's been there. When we're in the response phase, it's about emergency response, binding up the wounds, being safe, yeah? When we're in recovery, it's about reflection and learning from the experience, the shalom process, you know, um, looking backwards to look forwards and processing maybe even some stress and mental issues, you know, and just writing out what God has said to us and helping people get through things. And then once we go through that kind of reflective time, which I think a lot of people in our nation at the moment have been going through, then you come to reconstruction, rise and build. Okay, we've been through that. Now we need to rise and build. And the difficulty for some people has been that we've been going around in a bit of a cycle. We thought we were there, response, recovery. We want to go to reconstruction, but we have to go to response and recovery again because things keep coming round and round again. And so there's been this kind of, don't worry about the details of that, but there's been this kind of curve of adjustment. You know, we're plunging into something. Now we're coming out of it. Oops, now we're going back into it again. Now we're coming out. Now we're and so that's been quite emotional for people as well. So we as the church, if we know the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Shalom, we can be offering that healing to them. We're still here. We still love you. We're a community that loves. God loves you. We can be that shalom center that shalom clinic for people that place of well-being amen so practice these habits and begin to live in perfect peace who has perfect peace the prince of peace so set your mind on the word and prayer over the next few days in, as you enter 2022, take some time to hear Jesus. Put to death anything that distracts you in the flesh, yeah? That gets in the way of Jesus, the clutter. Choose perfect peace. When you could choose anxiety right now or something else, choose perfect peace. And worship together with your family or your life group or some friends in the church as we gather together. And let God speak to you his heavenly thoughts. And then minister out to the people around you. Notice what's going on and love those around you. Amen? For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Amen. Father, if we've never come to know you, today we choose to repent and to acknowledge you, Jesus, as the Prince of Peace. You died for me on the cross. Just say that if you've never said that before. I acknowledge you died for me on the cross. You took my sin on yourself and anxieties. And then you were buried and rose again from the dead to give me life. And I believe in you today, Jesus. I thank you for forgiving me through the cross. And I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord. I put you as first in my life. I get rid of all other idols that I've been chasing. I put you first today. And I thank you, Jesus, for being in my life, for forgiving me, for making me a son of God, a daughter of God, a Christian. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your peace. And let's all just say now, thank you, Jesus, for your peace. We put you first in our life, Jesus. We thank you for being our Prince of Peace. And we walk in that today in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to hand over to Yash for our final song today. And then uh, Pastor Dorcas will just come and uh, close us in prayer. God bless you all. Let's stand together. Mm -hmm.